they give the homeless as a classification of eviction. And they always call it camping in a public park without authorization. And that's their loophole. That's their excuse to say that we can't be homeless. Because the reality is when you're homeless... Uh... Early July, Ash Wolf received a $360 ticket for her encampment at Milligan's Pond Park. Ash, a mother of three, has been trying to get her life and children back but couldn't due to not having a home and stable source of income. Uh, come in. Okay. Go, go ahead, go ahead. I visited her encampment and talked to her to know more about her story and expectations and, uh, from the city. Leftovers from the other last night. I cook fried, feed them until last night. Right, that's going to go to the critters. And what these two guys? <laughs> uh, these are my babies. I've had them for quite a while. They're my emotional support. So what are, what are their names? Uh, the black one is Astrid. And the blonde one is Loki. Uh, the blonde one is mom of the black one. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, so when did you, when did you receive the uh, notice? This is what they give the homeless as a classification of eviction and they always call it camping in a public park without authorization and that's their loophole that's their excuse to say that we can't be homeless because the reality is when you're homeless and shelters are full or there's no availabilities anywhere the only options that we have is to come out here and we still have the human right to have a roof over our head and stability so we can try and get back ahead in life and they don't grant us that in any way, shape, or form when every single time we get situated or find a way to, to survive, we have people harassing us, people calling in false reports on us, uh, and demanding us to be removed. And with the services and everything, like the cops are obligated to contact all the services for the homeless in Barrie to assist. But when they're giving a 24-hour notice and forcing them to move, by the time any of the agencies even find out where the location was of the person, they're forced to move. So for this time around, I decided I wasn't going to allow them to force me to move. I've got chronic nerve damage and fibromyalgia. I'm, it's painful for me to have to constantly move and reset up, move, reset up. I can't function. I can't have the ability to have enough structure and whatnot to actually get ahead and try and get housing. So everybody in this area has been coming to me and, and uh, standing our ground with it, trying to prove a point that we as humans, just because we're homeless doesn't mean we don't have rights. And the only options we have is government land because that's the whole world. So to tell us that we can't live, it is not okay and uplift us and cause emotional distress and physical pain and risk of death is not fair to, to anybody. And the fact that the city isn't doing anything about it when really they, they should have the ability to assess every situation as an individual situation and de depending on circumstances of the situation, uh, then have somebody removed or asked to, to clean up the space or whatever it might be but when you walk into a space like this and this is how it looks every day like i know i got some dirty dishes and but i maintain my space quite yeah i well. see i see it i goes. always have a, a garbage or garbage bags i'm always i actually had the city of barry coming in and telling me that they'll pick up my garbage bags for me i'm also getting the whole community here gathering all the garbage that after the fire that happened here they literally blew it all down in or down the hill and left it and even the police tape was left throughout the forest so we're in here cleaning up and, and trying to do that and we can't even like it's not fair to us because at least we're trying to keep the place clean and if you when you walk through here and you see the other homesteads that are situated here they're clean they're organized they have fire safety and all that being handed out to them. I personally have documents and stuff that I've been handing out to people and I've been doing my best to teach F like fire safety. This is one of the ones that I just recently got, uh, which actually has a few issues in itself with like where we're expected as a homeless person to keep our cooking fires. 
which is unsafe and whatnot. So I got those there that I've been handing out to the other homeless in the area. Um, and then I'm also handing out the signs that state our rights for our tents, at least trying to, to put up or get people to at least acknowledge the fact that we've already fought for these rights and it was granted. It's, it's classified in the Charter of Rights. Here it is here, the S8 of the Charter. So the fact that they come in threatening to take our belongings, destroy our homesteads when the city isn't even providing roofs over our heads, isn't justice and isn't fair and it's, it walks on the human rights. Like I even went out and got the, the bylaw things so that I can educate myself a little bit more on it. And how, how long you have been uh, staying here? I've been here, uh, I think three, four weeks. Uh, but I was previously pitched up against the fence right over here, uh, beside the hydro building. And then I was on the other side of the fence when I got another eviction demanding me to move in 24 hours. Um, so I just literally moved 20 feet because I don't have anywhere else to go. <laughs> if I had somewhere to go, I wouldn't be here. All of the people that are here, if they had somewhere to go, wouldn't be here. Yeah. And the most of the people that are here are trying to keep the area safe and clean and like trying to be respectful and everything else. So it's, it's a complicated situation. And until the city acknowledges it and starts doing something about everything that's going on, it's just going to get worse. And the homeless agencies that are working with everybody are getting so swamped that they're even having difficulty keeping up with everything. So if the city doesn't do something about it soon, it's just going to keep getting worse. We've got police coming in and being nasty and making up, making up reports, claiming that things are, are being reported. I've had cops sneak up climbing the cliff behind my homestead here to literally push past me with flashlights into my, my homestead at 11.30 at night. And then I've had tactical units and police, oh. which I have a video of, showing up because people are hanging out outside the memorial playing frisbee, which is normal. It's a public park. That's, that's normal behavior in a park. So to have tactical and police show up for no reason, and they didn't even get out of their cars, it, it's intimidation, it's harassment, and under uh, my understanding of it, it is classed or classified as terrorism doing that. Using fear to try and control somebody, and that's what the police do, and the city of Barry do this. They come in, they threaten to take the only belongings you have for survival, and they, they use the bylaws as an excuse for it, and they say it's not their fault, it's the people that are calling in and complaining. But the reality is, they have the power to, to make the change. Every single person in this city has the, the ability to make the change. It's all in actually speaking up and trying and actually doing something about it. Because until then, it's, it's, it's a, a never ending battle. And we're losing lives on an almost a daily because of the choices that these people are doing, coming in and, and threatening and harassing and forcing people to move all the time. They're even, like, even with the, the hotel thing, they knew that the thing was gonna be torn down. Almost every person that's in there either has been there for months with barely any assistance to even get housed because the reality is that the housing or services can only do so much. The city needs to step up and do something because that's the only way things are gonna happen. Yeah, and I don't know if you're aware, but recently, in the, in the beginning of this year, British Columbia Supreme Court said that, you know, if somebody is living in encampments in, in, in a public uh, area that, you know, they can't just go in and can't just evacuate them unless there is, you know, uh, some alternate shelter arrangement for them. Mm -hmm. The shelters are full. So, uh, well, like, are you aware about that? Any, any legal? I'm aware of the fact that they're trying to put a stop to the for enforcement of moving people right now. Um, but even with the meetings that have been occurring for it, they're not getting anywhere. At, like, council meetings are not really caring. They just want everybody in, the, in this situation out of sight, out of mind, tucked under the carpet. 
and the reality is like we're just being treated like garbage over it like it's it's a situation that nobody wants to acknowledge but everybody wants to have something to say about it so it doesn't help in any situation and uh are you are you getting any kind of legal help uh, from any any non-profit legal I have lawyers or somebody helping you uh, Gilbert Center Busby Center Ryan's Hope and a few other agencies that have been trying to help me uh to get housing and to accommodate uh basic needs that I might not be able to accomplish out here and they're trying their best but they can only do so much they We've got apartments with unreasonable rent fa- uh, factors. A lot of people, a lot of the people that are out here are welfare ODSP and low income because they can't afford a place on their own or nobody wants to rent to them because of the fact they're welfare ODSP or lower income. Yeah. So it's putting the whole place or whole t- or whole city into a predicament. Like Yeah, I remember I when I moved to Barrie from Mississauga, there's an apartment there's a house right next to this park and i came to see this and then i s- submitted my application but i did not get it like i had a full time job still mm-hmm. i did not get the ap- uh, apartment so i can imagine if somebody is on you know on on It's some kind of assistance or you know trying to get a job how hard you know would be you know to to get a get a place to live and you know uh more often than not now like for people that are on ODSP welfare and lower income they're stuck having to get groups of people renting or places if they can but then at the same time when you have to rely on other people it's just putting them in a predicament where if one person doesn't pay their portion they're still homeless in the end so it's a never ending cycle when it comes to that kind of stuff for sure and i've even seen police officers living in hotels over the last year because they couldn't find housing so it's definitely not just a a, a face of oh poverty is the only problem it is a problem that's growing and it's starting to branch out to the upper class and middle class and what not as well. <clears throat> so it's the fact that it's all over Canada and it's getting worse. It there just there has to be something done about it. And coming in and terrorizing the people that are in the situation. The reality is the war should be with the town to do something about it, not the people that are suffering and struggling to begin with. Every time they give a ticket, most people can't even afford to pay them, which causes more conflict in their lives. Most people don't even have the ability to have cell phones out here because they're not stable enough to even have a phone. So it's there's just a lot of complications in the situation and until the city acknowledges it and actually cares enough to do something about it, it's it's just going to persist. I go by Ash Wolf. Ash Wolf. and just just uh, some information are you uh, from barry in simcoe county or i lived in barry for four years now uh, i had a house up on big bay point for three years and i received an n12 from my landlord claiming that he was moving in with his kids and he moved somebody else in for an extra 500 a month and i was paying already 1500 a month for the main floor two bedroom uh, and it was supposed to be for me and my kids and since then i've been struggling trying to find housing of my own again so i'm i'm even messaging like at least 2 3 landlords a day trying to get even just viewings and more often than not as soon as they ask well where did you, where does your income come from and they find out from me it's disability they don't respond or when they find or see my income because i'm trying to get my children back in my care i can't prove the child tax benefit on top of it So they tell me that I, the government doesn't give me enough money to live off of. So how many how many children uh, do you have? I have three children. I have a 15-year-old daughter and two boys ages 9 or 7 and sorry. 7 <laughs> and 10. <laughs> and and so where where are they uh, right now? Uh my boys are away on uh, my daughter's with family. So it's uh, I was supposed to have my children home 8 months ago. and I've been struggling to find housing to be able to do so. And on top of it, like I was basically fostering children for 3 years out here. Uh, so everything I did to get my kids home after a personal issue that happened with my ex-husband years ago, uh 
everything just came collapsing down over the the pen or the issue with the housing factor. I and literally have one court date to finish to get my kids home to me right now, and I can't do it without housing. And I've got agencies and everything trying their best, but the reality is the city needs to step in and do something about it. So when when was the last time you uh, saw your children? I haven't been able to see my children in approximately four years. But I was asked by the Children's Aid out here to raise other people's children while I was battling for mine. So it's a complicated and long situation. <laughs> But everybody's got their personal struggles and circumstances as to why they're out here or, or fighting to get off the streets. So yeah. <laughs> it's a little bit of a personal back there. So. Yeah. So what what are so now you now you have received the uh, ticket so you know does that keep you awake at night that you know they might come in and take out I'm terrified for my safety at this point because the police can get pretty brutal and the fact that I've taken a stand because my ticket was issued a while ago and the three days after it was issued it was the Friday so it was issued on the fourth and when the Friday came and they were supposed to enforce the situation like they were claiming uh, because I had people here which was a, a good chunk of the services that work with the homeless that the city is supposed to be contacting for them were all standing here on my behalf and they didn't show and then they waited four days and during that four days I had police coming at 11:30 at night people harassing me at like nine o'clock in the morning um, so police and city of Barrie have been coming repeatedly at least once a day to harass me and threaten me and they can say that they're not threatening me but when they tell me that they're coming to steal my items and force me out of the park or like this morning they came in woke me up and said they were going to physically remove me and charge me with trespassing on private property but this is government property so everything that they're doing is intimidation and harassment and I'm absolutely terrified as to what they're going to do to me. I've got my animals to take care of. I've got myself to take care of. In the last few weeks, I haven't, like, since the this notice was given to me, I haven't been able to go to a friend's house and shower out of fear they're going to come and take all my stuff. I haven't been able to do my laundry because I can't go and spend a few hours at the laundry mat. I'm terrified to even run to the store and buy food because I don't know what they're going to do. So it's it's a scary situation and the intimidation and everything else that they use to try and enforce this stuff. More often than none, the homeless just pack up and move to another hidden location, but that doesn't help them get off the streets. So So just just last thing, so how I see there are more uh more tents, more encampments around. So how how many people are here? From and my understanding, there's approximately 22 people that that use this space as a homestead so there's quite a few people that some of them pick or pack up and leave during the day and come and pitch up at night uh, some of them are more permanent well, not permanent but temporary situations for them uh, so some of them are in groups some of them are singly out here uh, some of them are just sleeping under a tarp out of fear that if they get a tent the police will just come rip a hole in it or destroy it anyway so Yeah, and and when I when I walked in, I, I I saw that you know everybody was sitting around, you know, like having a normal chat as as <laughs> as friends would have, you know, laughing and you know. That uh, group that's sitting there is a mix of homeless, previous homeless, and people who are housed. It is a multi group, and a big part of the reason why this is a spot where a lot of them come, is because this is. A memorial for the homeless right over here and that's part of the reason why I'm situated here as well because uh, me and my other half here are working on rebuilding and bringing it across like fixing the garden and putting flowers in. we have churches dropping off soil and flowers and tools to, to work on the stuff so we've got the extra tents to put the tools in and the stuff that the churches are bringing to help with the memorial since the city won't do anything about the memorial 
they don't come in and clean it, they don't take care of it, they don't do anything, but it's already acknowledged on, on the Google Maps that it is a homeless memorial. So the city will take care of every other memorial, but when it comes to the homeless, they, they just don't care. Yeah, and just last last couple of things. So what what kind of support system you have? You mentioned that, you know, you, you cook a lot of food, so people come in, they eat. So what kind of support system I, that you have built uh, for each other here? Uh, we all help each other out with supplies for food. Uh, people take to, or sometimes people will show up with hot dogs and burgers and whatnot because a lot of the, the homesteads don't have fire or cooking fires to use to cook their food. Some of them don't feel safe using a fire because they don't, or they're not fire safety educated and whatnot. So if a bunch of people come through here throughout the day and in the evenings, and I assist them with water bottles, I assist them with food, I assist them with supplies. Uh, I have like extra tents and sleeping bags dropped off for people that are in need of them. I have tarps. Um, I get stuff dropped off on a regular from the agencies to help out. And it's all stuff that's donated. And if I had everything in my one tent, I wouldn't be able to move. <laughs> <laughs> so just last thing. So what now? What do we expect from the city that that you have received the ticket? You are saying you know you are living under constant fear that, and you can't go anywhere. You know even can't buy food. So what what is your expectations? Uh, I'm from hoping the that somebody that has the, the power can step in and say, okay, enough is enough. Let's not war against these people. Let's help these people because that's what's needed. They can't just keep shunning us into the bushes and not caring because you're not fixing the problem. You're just pushing it under the carpet. And the reality is if the city wants to tell us that it's illegal to be homeless, then they need to be doing something to make sure that people are not homeless. So. Ken, whose father died a few months back in a fire at the park, showed me the memorial he is building for him. And in the process of cleaning the ferry cage, slowly, and everything going on over the last hour. It's so fucking dirty. I could barely find it. Hey, how are you, Ken? Not bad. Sorry, I'm sticking it out. No, 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 it's okay. Uh, we're basically trying to clean up this part of the memorial. There's my dad that died here. So we're uh, dedicating this half of the garden to him. Brian and Lori Baker started this mm -hmm. years and years ago for his daughter. Um, dedicated it to everybody who's died of an overdose or friends of homelessness, basically. Or alcohol. Or alcohol, yes. overdose, anything, right? A lot of them, they weren't even overdoses. They were accidents, right? So... Um, yeah, since my dad died down here, I've been down here. I haven't left the scene since, what, June 17th, Father's Day. Um, plan on making a railing, plan on making it safer, plan on cleaning up all the garbage. And his ass was telling me the city's threatening to, to kick us out because they're going to clean up the garbage, but the garbage has been here for five years or more. Slim had an encampment, mm -hmm. that's how my dad died. And they, they literally just pushed it down the fucking hill. Right, so we're doing all this work. I've done a lot of this work by myself. I'm gonna build a staircase, an archway. Uh, Lori and Brian are supposed to get married this year, so I'm gonna push them to do that. Hopefully. Yeah, congratulations to them. Yeah. So at the memorial, there are rocks with names of people who died. That rock is there. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, no. But these all got to be redone. Yeah, they got to be And then we're looking at that rock. And Lori, 160 not. people and died people since one time. March. People there told me that not everyone who died was struggling with drug problems, but everyone was having housing problems.